Do you think that this, a CPU cooler made for a Raspberry Pi, can be turned into a hotend for a 3D printer? Maybe this will end up being the best working, awesome, epic, insane hot. The hot end is the part of a 3D printer that melts the filament while it's being pushed through a nozzle. It has a hot and a cold zone and the transition between the two temperatures must be short, otherwise clogging can occur. The part that connects both zones must be bad at conducting heat and often a thin titanium tube is used, called the heat break. Sounds simple, right? Okay, we've got a heat sink, a heater block, a... Heat brake and a nozzle. The heatsink has heat pipes, and heat pipes are highly effective thermal conductors, much better than just copper. Not many people know this, but there is actually a liquid inside of these things, and that evaporates here, it flows up through here, and it condenses here, and then it flows back down. And I want to bend these into a right angle so I can mount it to an extruder. I think that that's going to be the most difficult part of this project. These bends are probably work hardened and I'm afraid that it would break if I bend them into the other direction. Annealing this, so heating it up to regain its original malleability, is tricky because of the fluid inside here that can cause it to explode. So what I'm going to do is just bend it on top of this flask with this funnel. If it breaks then hopefully the fluid will pour inside here. The fluid that's in here is probably ammonia, ethanol or water. Um, well, by smell I can probably determine what kind of fluid is in there. You're fucking kidding me. I bought ammonia, ethanol, and water and I was convinced that it would break. Uh, oh yeah, we can pack this up. Our next challenge, maybe that will be our toughest challenge, is to drill a hole in here for the heat break. Um, and the the problem is with this is that this distance between these two uh, copper tubes, these heat pipes, is well around three millimeters. And the regular heat break has M6 thread. And what I'm hoping is that this wall thickness is thick enough, well that I well yeah that I don't damage it here. Um, but the plan B is to use this E3D heat break, and that has an M4 thread here. Um, the reason why I'm try to start with this. It's actually a good question. If I'm going to use this heat break, then I can also use um, well this whole Revo uh, system with this heater. Yeah, let's just step in M M4, screw this in there. Yeah, that would be the wise decision. Okay, also this one be a challenge then. I made this cool B-roll sequence to try and make something out of this, but if you really think about it. This is just me drilling a single hole in a piece of aluminum. Oh, and tapping it. Congratulations on making a threaded hole. Well done. Yes, yeah, very good. The next day on my way back to the studio, I still couldn't believe it. I, it felt wrong somehow. This should have been a struggle. Well, I have to move on and find new struggles to overcome. I designed an adapter for the hot end that fits the new version of the proper extruder, which is the successor of this extruder I designed a while ago. I have no idea if this version actually works, so maybe this will cause some issues. I printed the adapter out of resin, removed the supports from it, and I somehow had to cure it. But how? Wait a minute. Anycubic Center New Wash and Cure Max, this machine automatically washes and cures your resin printed parts. You need IPA or ethanol, and I went with ethanol. You just fill up the tanks, connect the corresponding tubes, cut them to the desired length, and you're good to go. It has a huge volume of 14.9 liters for large sized models. Just press the start button and it starts the process. It's fully automated so you can do something else in the meantime and let it do its thing. Check out the link in the description for more information. I 
just got out all parts of the new proper extruder out of acrylic on the Xtool P255 watt CO2 laser cutter. All parts fit on a single sheet and the nice thing about CO2 laser cutters is that unlike the standard diode lasers they can cut through materials like acrylic. I also found this neat feature within Fusion 360 which automatically aligns all parts next to each other which is a time saver. Peeling off the protective layer was a bit of a hassle but well worth it. After removing the last fingerprints I'm left with these insanely looking parts. Last night I mounted this extruder to this tool plate. I routed all the wires and soldered everything. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. This is by the way the BiQ Hermit Crab, which I fitted to this Optimus P1 3D printer. I couldn't help myself. Yesterday I have mounted this extruder to the printer to see how it looked. Because this is an RGB fan to make it faster and it it looks freaking good. It also reports the temperature, but I have no idea if this extruder actually works or if it heats up. Well, it, I, I think it will heat up, but I haven't tested it. Uh, let's see if it actually prints something. So, um, fingers crossed. So it reports the temperatures, and now the nozzle is at 22 degrees. 20 degrees, on. Temperature is rising. We're at 100 degrees. So it's already, um, well, let's call it hot. Hey. There's filament coming out. Here we are, our very first filament. Hmm, this actually goes quite well. I'm using my subjective temperature sensor, and I would say that this is around 30 ish degrees. Okay, let's extrude and see if it turns into the right direction. It would be a first. So here we go. It did it turn into the right direction? It fucking does. This is a weird video and it extrudes without skipping. Look at that. This is literally the first time that this that I see this extruder extruding with this very small motor. This very small pancake stepper. I'm extruding filament with my own developed extruder. Okay, for some reason. Machine broke. <sighs> Something is going wrong during this video. It doesn't look right. For some reason, this terminal is completely fucked. Um, I'm in luck because there is one free over here. Hey, we're back. Okay, I've set the E step value so if I extrude 100 millimeters, it actually extrudes 100 millimeters. And I've set the Z offset, so everything is set now. Yeah, let's let's print the Benji. Well, there is filament coming out. Where my finger is right now, this is literally, it's this is not hot. No, there is some under extrusion. The thickness of this acrylic is 1.75 which is the exact diameter as the filament. So there is absolutely no give here. I think that I have to drill out the filament path a bit. Okay, I've drilled out this filament path and now it's printing smooth as fuck. Look at that. This is, this is just perfect. Okay, this is not going to be the best bench the world has ever seen. I didn't add a part and fan to it and that causes the uh, corners to curl up. So that's not a problem. 
of the hotend itself, I should add a apartment fan to it. More RGB! This is a good looking Benchy. But before we are going to say goodbye, I want to test one more thing. First, I want to say thanks to my Patreon supporters. Especially these guys. These are my top tier Patreon supporters. Your support helps a lot with these projects. So thank you guys. I'm wondering if that extruder would be capable of printing the softest material you can buy. This is TPU with the sure hardness of 60A which has the same softness as an inner tube. I've managed to print this material before, but this version of the proper exterior is completely different because it's made out of acrylic sheet material and it has a custom hot end. So yeah, let's find out if it actually works. Okay, here we go. Please. Work. Yeah. A bit of filament is coming out. Well, it's not looking bad. Ah, no, it's blocking. Yeah, it's skipping. So, right now it's blocked. This means that the way the extruder is right now, it's not capable of printing this extremely soft filament. That's a shame. This is not going to work. <laughs> 